Hello, my name is John Mount, and I'd like to talk about a very fun and serious data science topic, or basically a method you can incorporate into your data science practice to up your effectiveness as a data scientist. It's basically, do not use classification rules for classification problems. Now let's define our terms. A classification problem is a problem where your dependent variable or the thing to be predicted is a categorical, like yes or no or um, A, B, and C. And basically your training data would then be explanatory variables that might predict that outcome variable and which category it's supposed to be in. Now a classification rule is a piece of software or mathematics that makes the same sort of determination. If it's in the true class, maybe this would predict true, hopefully, or maybe false, not hopefully. Now what we're saying is never use a classification rule for a classification problem. There's sort of fun, uh, sort of a horrid little industry in writing articles about whether logistic regression is a classifier or not. Uh, you can be called wrong either way because internally logistic regression returns a probability instead of a hard decision. And that is actually its saving grace, not something to be avoided. So in a software point of view, all it means is in Python, remember to call predict prob A instead of predict. In R, it means to set something like type equals response. Most, I think R actually defaults to that anyway in many cases, but it's worth checking. Um, not in all cases. So you want a number back, a probability, and this has much more information than the hard class rule you'll get if you would say predict instead of predict prob A or type equals I believe class instead of response. Now the reason is most classification rules are in fact underlying numeric or probability scores and then they compare that score to a hard fixed threshold of one half, hard coded threshold one half, which is usually not a good choice for data sets with imbalanced data. In fact, we think most of the engineering steps people take in dealing with imbalanced data is an attempt to work around the mistake of using a hard coded threshold like a half to build a classification rule for the much more valuable underlying score. Now, I have some notes on this where I say this much more slowly at a URL that I'll give on the screen. Now, the, um, this has gotten me thinking. This is just actually really good advice, which I think I can back up. But this has also gotten me thinking, and this is sort of an advanced topic now, not that, you won't, not that a beginner wouldn't understand it, but that a beginner would be unwise to repeat it to someone else because they may be subject to criticism. But basically, what if classification problems So that's where, again, where you're training data, the dependent variable is a categorical. What if, in addition to being what you want to predict should be a probability, what if you wish your training data were also probabilities? That the training data didn't just give you what class something is, but what probability it would have hit that class under repeated experiments. So classification problems, my advanced idea, are censored, training data. One can imagine an ideal world where in the classification problem training data, for each row you're not given whether it was in the true or false class, say true being they clicked on the ad, false being they didn't click on the ad, but you're actually given the actual probability of each one of those events, that this person had a 5% chance of clicking, this person had a 2% chance of clicking. That data, which is not available, but if it were available, would be much more valuable. Though sometimes we get it by aggregating on a few variables. But that is my advanced statement, that classification problems can be thought of as censored data. That in a perfect world, you would have been told every probability, and instead, you're merely told the outcome. Now let's work that with a concrete example 
using dice. Now, for a dice problem, let's take the common case of a normal, fair, six-sided die. Now there I rolled a six, but suppose I had, let's make our event we're looking for rolling a one. Now, in a data set where we just recorded whether the die came up a one or not, each row is really containing a, you know, only a single dependent value, was it a one or not? And actually, very little information that five times out of six, we know it's probably not gonna be a one given that it's a fair die. So really, it's carrying a lot less than one bit of information in the dependent or outcome variable every time. And how exciting it is to roll a one depends a lot on the die. The real information is how many sides are there on the die? Because that's exactly, if it's a fair die, what determines the probability of rolling a one. So we're very interested in, is it this die, or is it a die more, is it a die more like this one? This is being a four-sided die, which has a much easier time of achieving a one. One in four chance instead of one in six chance. Or is it a die like this one? which I believe is a 30-sided die, and so it has a much less, a harder time achieving the one than either one of these dies. So if our only explanatory variable was the color of the die, yellow, green, red, by observing the rolls, here's a re-roll, came out to a, not a one, here's a re-roll, came out to not a one, and here's a re-roll, came out to a one, if our only explanatory variable was the color of the die and our only dependent or outcome variable was whether it's a one or not, this data set would let us learn the one rate of each of these dies very, very slowly and inefficiently. And really what we want is what probability each die had of coming up one. And that is what's more interesting that that sort of data, if available, and it becomes available through aggregation. If we had a lot of rows, we could average all the yellow rows into one row that shows the rate of ones coming up instead of each individual row. And then do something like beta regression instead of logistic regression, mathematically very similar, but a much faster algorithm if the right data is available. So what I'm saying is the description of the die is more useful than any one roll. And that's what I mean by classification problems are an instance of censored training data. If every time this was rolled, instead of just saying whether it was a one or not, we said how many pips or what the number shown was, then the model could actually quickly learn the range of the die and much more efficiently and fast infer the consequences of being yellow, red, or green. So that's my advanced topic that Classification problems are basically better considered as censored regression problems, that something bad's happened to the outcome, maybe something inevitable, but that is why it might be very appropriate to use a regression technique, such as a generalized linear model, logistic regression, on such problems. And uh, thank you very much for your time.